yourself in on March 22, 1942. And the excerpt I'm going to read to you is uh, just a brief excerpt. Uh, she arrived in camp on the first transport to Auschwitz. Uh, she was tattooed number 1,716. There were 999 German prisoners, uh, women, that were brought to Auschwitz the same day. They were given the numbers 1 to 999. Uh, they started numbering the Jewish women at 1,000. So Rena was the 716th woman in Auschwitz, tattooed in Auschwitz. And this is uh, about March 26, 1942, when the first transport of Jews arrived, arrived in Auschwitz. The brakes squeal with such finality that we all know instinctively that our journey has ended. The doors are pushed open to a dull gray haze. There is no color, there is no hue. Still, we blink at the light, stinging our eyes. The sign reads, Auschwitz. Get out of the car, the Germans order. We shift from blank stairs to the business of collecting our belongings. Go quick, men in striped uniforms prod us with sticks whispering under their breath. Move quickly, we don't want to hurt you. The SS aim their guns, forcing their, these poor prisoners to hit us so that we jump from the car and we jump half dead with our luggage, if we have luggage. It is four feet to the ground, my knees cramped from being stationary for so long, as if they will snap as I land on the ground. Still, I turn to help the woman with her baby. A stick taps my shoulder, go quick. I look for the eyes belonging to the voice, but there are only hollow black holes staring into my face. Get in line, orders are sharp, punctuated by whips against shining leather boots. Throw your suitcases over there, the SS yell. I place my suitcase upright neatly next to the growing pile, then turn to ask one of the SS guards, how are we going to find our suitcases later? I figure I'm a human being and I have a right to ask. Get in line and shut up, he yells in my face, pointing his gun at me. My hair on my skin bristles. He doesn't see that I'm human. There is an odor I cannot identify. It is not from human waste or people who have not bathed in days, although that smell is also prevalent. It is the redolence of fear permeating the air around me. It is everywhere, in the eyes of the men and the women around me, in our clothing and our sweat. The baby isn't alive anymore, but its mother does not notice the limpness of the form in her arms. Her desperate grasp on its frail corpse spooks me. There is too much happening. Everything is so hurried and so haphazard that there is no way to make sense of the situation. I look through the crowd for some direction, for someone whose kind face will tell me why I am here, what will befall us. I see him. He stands before us superior and seraphic, taking control, directing us to go this way or that. He is so neat and refined in his gray uniform. He is gorgeous. I smile into his blue eyes, hoping he will see me for who I am. Do you want to give up the child? He asks the woman with the dead baby. No, her head shakes frantically. Go over there, he says. How kind of him not to point out to her that her infant is dead, I think to myself. How kind of him to send her over to the group who is obviously weaker. The elderly, the very young, are gathered apart from those of us who are stronger, able to work long, hard hours. There are several thousand men, women, and children on the platform, each of us told to go either left or right. The direction has no meaning to us. I wonder which way the man in gray will tell me to go. Parents try to hug their children before they are taken away. We have to go work, they comfort each other. You are young enough not to have to work with us. Grandmama will take care of you. They assure their flesh and blood. Everything will be okay, you'll see. You'll be happier if you're not with mommy and daddy. And then mommy and daddy are separated. I cannot bear the sound of children crying. This is madness. My mind begins to whirl, struggling to focus on something, anything to keep me from screaming. I stare at the man in gray. He is so stunning, I'm sure he must be kind, too. His orders are always obeyed. The SS around us defer to him quickly, answering, Hi, Hitler. His finger points. I answer by walking to the side of the other able-bodied young women. On the other end of the compound, we envy the group that will not have to work. They will go someplace warm, somewhere where they will be taken care of. It is natural to think this way. We are human beings. We assume we will all be treated humanely. I watch the proceedings with semi-fascination before lapsing into the fog where nothing makes sense or needs to make sense. This is not daydreaming. This is electric shock. Trucks come and load up the old, the sick, and the babies. There is nothing nice or caring about the way they rush them. These feeble souls are herded into the flatbeds like goats piled on top of one another like so many sacks of potatoes. My stomach somersaults. For one sick moment, it occurs to me that maybe they're not going to be treated as well as I've been thinking. But I chase that thought away. They're in a hurry, I chide myself. 
there are so many of us, they have only momentarily forgotten to treat them gently. Many of the girls next to me wave goodbye to those being taken away, and I watch their, tear, their stricken faces, realizing that my prayer has been temporarily answered. There is no one for me to wave to, and for one brief moment, I feel a tiny shred of gratitude. At least when I said goodbye to my family, it was not in this place. There is a smudge on my left boot, spitting into my palm. I stoop to wipe it away. It is white again. Line up, get in rows of five. Raus, raus. The prisoners poke us with sticks. The SS aim their guns at us. We are civilians, unfamiliar with military drill. We line up clumsily. March, stay in your rows. If you step out of line, you will be shot. March. 1,000 girl women step in semi-perfect time, in semi-perfect rows of five, through the iron gates of camp. Above our heads, welded in iron, are the words, our Makfai, and we believe what the sign says, work will make you free. We are young, we remind ourselves. We will work hard and we will be set free. We will see what happens. But on the outside, we are walking like we are doomed. It is raining, chilled like March rain is. We are lost in our thoughts, but it is too cold to do much thinking. Everywhere it is gray. My heart is turning gray. Ladies and gentlemen, Rena Gallison. I wish I was as good a speaker as Heather just uh, was reading here, but I'm not a professional speaker. I'm sure everybody is aware of it, maybe.